Let's solve our second millimeter. In the circuit below, use M and A, as was seen in class, with notes 1, 2, 3, and the reference, as shown. Find V1, V2, V3, V0, and the power in the controlled source. Well, there is only one controlled source in the circuit, this one. That means find the power here. Let's do that. The first step in an m &A solution, according to what we've seen in class, is to choose the reference node. But they have already chosen the reference node for us. The second one is identify every true node in the circuit apart from the reference 1, 2, and 3. They've already been identified for us. The next step is deciding what are the directions for currents in every branch. That is semi-arbitrary. I'm choosing this one here, this one there. And this one's given by the polarity of the Vx. This one I'm going to choose like so. That one is given. The one in this branch I will choose from um, with that direction. And the same here. Those are evil currents. I'm going to call this Ia and uh, Ib. Why not? Just evil currents. I will not name the regular branches currents. And now we go for equations. First equation, controlling equations. Is there any controlling variable here? Well, there is only one control source, this one. Vx is a controlling variable, so it deserves a CTL equation. Who is the controlling variable? Vx. So Vx has to be equal to something. Vx is defined here. It says Vx is in reality V3 minus V of the reference. V3 minus 0, and that is your first equation. Second one, evil equations. Well, there are two evil branches, one here and the other down here. Let's say evil for branch A. For this one here, this evil source tells us that V1 is higher than the reference by 3 Vx. So we say V1 is V of the reference, that is 0, plus the value of the source 3 Vx, only 3 Vx. And the other evil branch is defining another equation, B. If you feel uncomfortable calling them evil branches and evil equations, you can call this evil equation a KVL equation, because after all, that's what they are. How oh, much? Um, I'm going to call them evil B. Evil B says that no 3 is 6 volts higher than no 2. V3 is V2 plus 6. All right. Now, uh, what about uh, KCL equations? 1, 2, and 3. Well, KCL equations for node 1, there are three branches. There should be three terms. Currents arriving in the node, the evil current, IA, leaving the node, well, there is 4 milliamps. I'm going to write that for over a 1,000 just for the convenience of the calculator plus the current in this R branch, V1. Voltage of the origin minus voltage of the destination divided by the resistance. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. The equation is complete. KCL2 for no 2. Three elements. Current arriving only one. Origin, destination, resistance, V1 minus V2 over 2000. That is equal to the current in this vertical branch and our branch, V2 minus V reference over 2000. Plus the value of this evil current, plus IB. It's an unknown. Last, the equation for no 3, KCL3. Four terms, 1, 2, 3, and 4. IB arrives in a node, and from the top, 4 milliamps. For the convenience of the calculator, again, I write 4 milliamps like that, using integer numbers. Currents leaving, R branch, R branch, V3 minus V0, the reference, divided by 2,000 ohms. And the current in this other R branch is V3, minus the voltage of the reference, 0 volts divided by 4 kilo ohms, V3 over 4 kilo ohms. And that 
is the set of equations we need to solve for v1, v2, v3, ia, ib, and vx. Six unknowns and six equations. Let's go to the calculator. Equation writer vx is equal to v3. That is our first equation. We enter that in the stack. Equation writer, second equation, v1 is equal to 3 times vx, 3 times vx. And that is our second equation. Third equation, go to the equation writer, v3 is equal to v2 plus 6. That is our third equation. Enter, we have 3. Let's go for the KCL equations. Equation writer, ia. So let's say ia is equal to the current, well, 4 divided by 1000, that is 4 milliamps highlight, and we just say plus v1 minus v2 highlight highlight divided by 2000 ohms. And that is the fourth equation we enter. Mm -hmm. Equation writer. And, uh, well, you know, there is a current that I'm going to be using. Let me go back here. Let me go back here for a moment. And let's say, you know what? I'm going to highlight that and say redshift copy. That way I have that in the buffer. I... I say enter, mm -hmm. I go back to the equation writer, and because I have the buffer, I say paste, and I have my first term. That current is equal to V2 divided by 2000, highlight, plus IB, IB. And that is exactly the fifth equation. And last, we go one last time to the equation writer and write IB plus 4 milliamps. 4 milliamps. All of that is equal to V3 over 2000. V3 divided by 2000. And all of that plus V3 divided by 4,000. We create a system of six equations like this program type make me an array. And now we have to ask the calculator the unknowns we want to solve for. And those are V1 and V2 and V3 and uh, IA and IB. IB and of course VX. Six unknowns. Enter, make me an array. We are ready to go to the symbolic solver, ask for a solution, and those are the voltages. V1 is 120, V2 is 34 volts, V3 is 40 volts, IA, the evil current, in the leftmost branch, the controlled source, the one we need to compute the power in, is 47 milliamps. So check it out, we can compute the power in that source as 47 milliamps that multiplies 120 volts, delivered power. That is the power there. The rest of the values are given. Let me write it down. We want the power in this source. Well, the power in that source is value of the voltage, of course, is 120 volts multiplied by 47 milliamps. And that is absorbed power? No, it is delivered power. That source is delivering power. The current is flowing from low to high through it. So the power in the control source is directly 120 multiplied by 47 milliamps. 5.64 watts delivered power. We write that as 564 watts delivered or negative 564 watts, which is the Wiley plus notation negative for delivered power. We have V1, 120, V2, 34, V3, 40, and the power negative 564 watts. What about the voltage here? 
Okay, that voltage is a voltage produced by this current. What current is that? Well, that current is the current in this R branch. That current is exactly in this one, you see, is V3, 40 volts, divided by 4 kilo ohms. That is a current of 10 milliamps, of course. But that current of 10 milliamps, when you multiply that times 2,000 ohms, gives you who is V0, and you write V0 is 10 milliamps that multiplies 2 kilo ohms. That is 20 volts. And that is the answer that we need. V1 is 120, V2 is 34 volts, V3 is 40 volts. V0 is 20 volts. And the power in the control source in here is negative 564 watts. Thank you very much. Wait a minute. There are other easier, faster ways of solving that, aren't they? Of course they are. There is always more than one way of solving a circuit. Let's solve the circuit differently. Let's see this faster way of solving the circuit. Same as before, the reference nodes 1, 2, and 3 are given. Yes, and here the unknown is V2. However, this uh, V source is telling us that the value of this voltage in node 3 is actually V2 plus 6 volts. You see, it's not a new unknown V3, it's just the old one plus 6 volts. Oh, well, but wait a minute. Vx is V2 plus 6 because it's V3. It's V2 plus 6, so that means that 3Vx is actually 3 times V2 plus 6. And uh, because this is a reference node, the voltage here is 3Vx. The voltage here is actually 3 times V2 plus 6. You say, oh, wait a minute. Instead of having three unknowns, V1, V2, and V3, we have only one V2. Excellent. So we don't need three equations. We need only one. Well, let me choose the direction for current in this branch like this, in this branch like that, in this branch is given, in this branch we choose it like so. What about the currents in the evil branches? I don't care for them. I'm not going to write a KCL for node 1. And uh, I will not write a KCL for node 2 or node 3. What? I need an equation for V2. Absolutely. What I'm going to do is use KCL in its general form. I define a Gauss surface G and I write a KCL equation for that Gauss surface. KCL for the Gauss surface currents going in. Well, let's count one, two, three, four, five branches. I should have five terms. How many are entering? Well, one and two in and one, two, three coming out of there. So Karen's going in four milliamps, four milliamps, absolutely. Plus the one in here, which is this voltage, V1 minus V2, but divided by 2000, but we know that that is three times V2 plus six. So plus three times V2 plus six minus V2 divided by 2000 ohms. That's good. And that is equal to currents leaving the node. Beginning with this one, this is V2 divided by 2000. Plus the one here, that is V2 plus 6 divided by 2000. V2 plus 6 divided by 2000. This is a plus sign. Plus the last one, which is this one, V2 plus 6 divided by 2 and 2, 4000. You enter that equation in the calculator. It's only one equation, one unknown, and you solve for V2. And once you have V2, you add 6, you get V3. And you multiply that times 3, you get V1. And then you do the same manipulation to find V0. Way faster. Let's solve that equation. Here is our equation. Observe that I've instructed the calculator to take V2 as our unknown. I type Enter. And then I go to the symbolic solver and solve for V2, and V2 is 34 volts. So V2 is 34 volts plus 6. We get the value here, and that is 40 volts. And multiply that times 6, and we get 120 volts in V1. And we do the same manipulation as before, and we're going to get that V0 is in reality 20 volts. You say, but how do I find now the current in this branch that we're going to need to find what is the power in the source? Okay, 
so you compute this current that you can because you know this is 120 volts and this is 34 volts and uh, you have 4 milliamps that's the way you compute this current multiply by 120 and get the same power as before and that is an alternative way of solving this circuit thank you very much